A nuclear explosion can teach you a really important life skill. That is, if you watch Enrico Fermi. Enrico Fermi was an Italian physicist, an absolute screaming genius. There are so many things named after him. Fermions, Fermium, Fermi Dirac statistics, the Fermi theory of beta decay. But this is not about his Fermi solutions. This is about his Fermi problems. Fermi was a man who always went for the simplest approach to a problem. Not always the most accurate, but the simplest. It would give him a ballpark, a rough idea as to the answer, just to see if the problem was even worth attempting. Another physicist, Hans Bethe, talked about how he was trained like a graceful swan to flit through the rivers of mathematics to come to one beautiful physics result. And if he was a swan, Fermi was more like an angry goose honking and blustering his way through a problem, coming to an eh, close enough answer. He used to brag that he could get anything in physics right to a factor of two on just a few sheets of paper. That in a few hours he could solve problems that could take a physicist years to calculate to an exact answer. And that he was not interested in exact answers. The most famous example of this comes from the Trinity nuclear bomb tests. Fermi watched that explosion from really far away through thick welding glasses he wasn't a moron. And when the shockwave reached him about 40 seconds later, he dropped a few pieces of paper and he watched the shockwave send them back. And he judged and estimated that the explosion was roughly 10,000 tons of TNT. A few weeks later, the results came back and it was roughly 18,000 tons of TNT. Now, it might seem he was off by a lot there, but when you consider the scale of what he was dealing with and a few pieces of paper, a factor of two isn't that bad. Problems like this, where you can work out a lot of information from very, very little data, are known as Fermi problems. The most famous example, and the one I was given on my very first day in university, was how many piano tuners are there in City X, London, Dublin, New York, Chicago, wherever you happen to be living? At first, this seems impossible. But then you do what Fermi would have done. You estimate. You guess. How many people live in a city-ish? How many pianos would there be? ish. How often does pianos need to be tuned? Ish. Anything you don't know, guess, estimate. And you get pretty close. And the reason it works is because, sure, you might say one thing is twice as big as it actually is, but you'll probably say another thing is half as big as it actually is. Your stupidity is going to cancel out. Now at first, this may seem stupidly abstract, but being practiced at this is a really useful life skill. How long is it going to take me to do everything I need to do today? How long do I have to spend at this awful party before it's not rude to leave anymore? Taking this lesson to heart won't give you accuracy, but it will put you in the right ballpark. And given the achievements Enrico Fermi made over the course of his life, maybe the ballpark can be enough. Thank you for watching Story of Science. Every week I'm going to try and tell an interesting story about some aspect of the history of science. If you enjoyed this one, please watch one of my other videos or like, share, even subscribe. That will all be so helpful. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.